Well, boys and girls, we're getting uh, getting pretty knee-deep into some Resident Evil Village. That is exciting, though, with TGS ending, I think, tomorrow. And Capcom showing something tomorrow, which is Sunday. That's going up pretty late, I know. And then we're not going to see another update till this winter. Ain't no telling when it's going to be. And if anything, the world's still going to be in contact. But, hey, I'm excited. You know, Resident Evil is going to be good. It's going to be exciting. In this video, we're going to cover a few things about how I feel about gatekeeping, how I feel about the current state of Resident Evil. But, uh, you know what I've noticed about Resident Evil a lot, actually? Uh, there is an excessive amount of yelling and name calling in this series. In, in every game, there is someone yelling a name. There is someone getting eating while yelling a name. There is someone uh, being a top and bottom while yelling your name. There's just a lot to this game that I and franchise that I love. And I thought we'd start off with a wonderful rendition of excessive name calling and yelling and crying for their mommy. Well, maybe not that part. Probably it's in this video. But I figured that's the best way, you know, to celebrate Resident Evil and going on almost 25 freaking years. That being said, do enjoy this saucy little intro. My name is Twitchy Tango, and I'll see you guys very, very shortly. Jill, no. Claire. Excelligione. Stop right there. Wesker, you are alive. <clears throat> Ada. You look... She claims you're not FBI. <sighs> oh, Leon. <laughs> Long time no see, Chris. Wesker? be remiss if there wasn't really a lot going on right now with Resident Evil and there's a lot of people discussing and talking about how Resident Evil Village is not my Resident Evil because people are so stuck on enjoying the nostalgia of 1, 2, and 3 and I'm not dissing you for liking 1, 2, and 3 but nostalgia can end up ruining your experiences and what other people enjoy and what you might be able to enjoy and it looks like Village is about to call on a lot of the old lore and the old tidbits of the old stories that we've come to know and love. And it seems like it's going to be a lot of callbacks. It's going to be like with five brought everything forward into the story, made it more concrete. But a lot of people are complaining about these new viruses, these new monsters. Not you, you crazy witch that's probably going to end up sleeping with Ethan or trying to. It's like these beasts, man, all this stuff that we're seeing is not my Resident Evil. I'm sorry, we live in, we're playing a game that devolves around freaking dead walking there, but these witches, these vampires, these zombies apparently don't fit to the name that people constantly like. But the whole thing is Resident Evil does things with its host. These viruses connect to their host on a cellular level and they change their appearance, their body, much like Wesker changed his eyes, getting him crazy insane strength, be able to move faster than human eye can perceive, and regeneration on a cellular level that allowed him to come from even the most horrific of wounds. And it's kind of like the viruses bond with their hosts in different ways. Uh, if we look towards Wesker and his ability to do things, it drove him insane, gave him this God complex that made him say, you know what, I'm going to rule the world. I'm going to make everybody like me. And if you don't become like me, you're just not a cut above the rest. And much like with Alexis, Alexa Asford, and her transformation with the T. Veronica virus. These hosts, in a way, they interact and connect in a way, and you just look at people like Sherry Burton, who bonded with the G virus on a cellular level and allowed her to come back from instances like this, uh, all because she bonded with that G. And that insane healing factor uh, gave her increasingly impressive survival elements, but she can go insane much like Wesker did and wanting to destroy the world. She wanted to help and save it. And I think that's what we're trying to get to a point, is trying to figure out what's good, what's bad. With Alexa Ashford, she became whatever the hell that is through the abandoning of the T. Veronica virus and gave her the ability to shoot fire, allow her to do all these things. Uh, and it's like, 
all these viruses bond with their hosts in some sort of way. Who's to say that these beast men, these vampires, these witches didn't bond with this virus that we know nothing about in a way that made them get the appearance of werewolves, vampires, and witches. Uh, these viruses in the residue will do different things to different people, much like Sela uh, was given to Ouroboros, 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 Ouroboros. Um, and it absolutely turned her, turned her into this abomination and rejected her. These viruses do things to different people in a lot of ways. It either gives them powers or it destroys them, rejects them. That's kind of like what we got with Excel. It's kind of like what we got with William Birkin, who consumed all that gene and became this abomination. And his only priorities and his only goal is to procreate and carry on the G virus. And we got to see these things, this transformation of people. And I know people like to complain about how Resident Evil's changed and how it's gone away. And I think it's opening up to a lot of fans who enjoy, get to enjoy as much as we do. But say these beastmen and werewolves and don't exist in Resident Evil. And you can look at someone like Steve and realize these viruses, you know, latch onto their host. They reject or they don't. And you can see the transformation these things did to their characters. Even in the end, Steve still wasn't going to hurt uh, Claire because he loved her. These viruses either allow you to keep some of your humanity or deny your humanity and make you a monster. And though we don't know a lot of what's going on with Resident Evil Village. We'll no more Sunday when uh, the TGS uh, shows Capcom and what they're working with. And honestly, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. I think we should all be excited. Uh, whatever is coming on is either culmination of Chris, not just Ethan's story, but Chris's, whether it's good or bad. I really don't know. Uh, but I'm excited. It's okay to not be excited. It's okay to not enjoy what Resident Evil has gotten going on, but do not bash others for what they enjoy and what they like. I think with this direction that Capcom's going with Resident Evil is the culmination of 20 plus years of storytelling uh, into the culmination of something big, maybe. Will it be a letdown? For some. But could it be good? You know? Could it be exciting? I think it'll be exciting. I think we can look forward to what Capcom's cooking. But when this video is coming to its close, its final uh, moment, I wanted to really just say this. It's okay if you like Resident Evil 1, 2, 3, and Code Veronica. It's okay that that's all you like. But don't bash others for what they like. People want to argue that Resident Evil 4 is what gave us the downfall of Resident Evil. I would argue that Resident Evil 3, Final Escape, is what sort of started that trend a more action less horror because with jail you were better equipped you had more ways to kill zombies way more to keep yourself uh locked and loaded and four of course would lead the way to a more streamlined experience but i honestly don't believe if we continue on the path of fixed camera angles if we continue on the path of uh, tank control, sorry, I was losing my train of thought. If we continue on this path, I do not believe Resident Evil would have been as successful as it is now. And you can call it more, and you can call it, you know, garbage. Those fans aren't Resident Evil fans because they didn't grow up when I did. Screw you. Who cares if you grew up with OG? I didn't start playing Resident Evil 2 or Resident Evil to Resident Evil 2 on the Nintendo 64, and I vehemently love Resident Evil 6, and that's the hill I'll die on. And that's one of the most hated Resident Evil ever made. Uh, but I'm okay with liking things that aren't necessarily Resident Evil based. I'm okay with that being the way it is. Because if it had just stayed, stayed fixed camera angles, tank controls, I don't think it would have flourished in this current era. That's why most, like these end tiles that get released with fixed camera angles, tank controls, they do well for a niche market. But in the grand scheme of all, had Capcom not evolved and tried to mature Resident Evil, it would have not survived. It would have not lasted like it should have. And I think it's great. The direction, whether it's Ethan's in or Chris's in, I'm excited. Am I angry that Chris might actually have gone off to deep end? Sure. But I'll still remember the fun times I've had. Whatever is coming Sunday, tomorrow night, whatever is getting revealed, I'm excited. I think we can all be excited, but don't condemn those who like the new Resident Evil because you're too stuck on nostalgia and too bored with yourself to not try to do better. Uh, but that's really all I got, folks. This is the end of the video. 
Just let me hear your thoughts. What do you guys like about Resident Evil? Do you love Resident Evil? What's your favorite thing about the franchise? Whether you like the old school nostalgia one through three or whether you like four through seven or it's offshoots, let me know. I like Resident Evil Resident Revelations 2. I like six. I like seven. But that's just me. That doesn't mean that's your preference. Uh, if you enjoy Resident Evil, enjoy it. Don't let some try baby who will never be able to get stuck over the fact that he will only be able to enjoy one through three uh ruin it for you just enjoy things at the end of the day we're all resident Evil fans we should all want to enjoy what we love and as always in a minute i'll see you in the next video take it easy Woo!